Okay, I think we are live. Um, we haven't done this in a minute, so uh, I've got a um, just recap here. Um, I am just going to go live on uh, my other pages here. Where is it? I could spell that would be good too. All right, there's a lot of folks that came on today. That's excellent. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm so excited to have uh, so many people here today. Um, happy New Year. I know it's like the 19th, 20th day, but Happy New Year. Um, I'm Odette Ramos, your city councilwoman for the 14th district. We haven't had a town hall in a long time, so you'll have to excuse me dealing with the technology, um, but I'm really excited to uh, be doing these again. One of the things that um, we uh, did at the end of the year was ask uh, everybody uh, who was on our email list, what are some of the topics you'd like to um, talk about during the, uh, these town halls? And many people said, well, we want much more local neighborhood you know, happening. So here we are, Fremont Avenue, right in the middle of the district. Um, and I'm so happy to see so many of you on uh, today. Um, and just a couple of reminders, um, our libraries have those COVID tests um, on Saturdays. So this coming Saturday and next Saturday over at the Waverly Library, you can pick up your test. I'm sure all of you already ordered your four tests per household uh, from the US Postal Service as well. The tests are really important to make sure that we have um, an accurate understanding of, of who might be sick and, and who's not so that this thing we can finally tamp down on this thing. And there's always, always great um, opportunities to uh, get vaccinated. So now's a good time. Uh, and uh, our website and also the health department website has uh, plenty of information on where to get vaccinated. Um, so it's uh, it's uh, a good it's and it's also January. We're about to have snow, so here we are again. Um, but I think DOT has been really doing a great job. Um, I will say that um, you know recycling has been a little tough, but we're getting there. Um, with the every other week, I think is going to work great. Um, Want to acknowledge Sean Stinnett, who is uh, the Main Street manager uh, for the main, head of the Main Streets for all eight. How many are there? Eight Main Streets mm -hmm. in the city. Um, Waverly Main Street being one, and we'll talk about what that means um, as well. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about what's going on on Green Mountain Avenue, and there's a lot happening. Luckily. Luckily, um, the uh, construction is finally coming to an end and it took so long and many holes were dug through the streets to put in the water and the conduit. We had to do it because we wanted to do that first before putting in nice fancy streetscape um, mm -hmm. because it would be the worst thing to put some nice fancy streetscape and then get it dug up again. So. I, I want to apologize on behalf of the city. It took way too long, but we're getting there. And we think that the the, the, the streetscaping will be complete um, probably by, you know, they're saying November. So so that, you know, we uh, will be finally done with everything um, and we'll have to have a big party because we're going to be optimistic about um, where we are with um, COVID. <laughs> so um, very excited about that. So that's one update. Um, so what we're gonna do today is talk a little bit um, with Diana Emerson, who is the interim director of the um, Waverly Main Street. She was on the board and then is filling in the executive director role, doing a wonderful, amazing job. Um, also neighbor around the corner for me. Um, I live actually on 31st Street um, near Greenmount Avenue. So Greenmount Avenue is certainly um, near and dear to my heart um, as well. And I'm really excited about all the things that are um, happening. So um, Diana is very familiar with uh, the Waverly Main Street. We'll go kind of through like geographically what's happening from the north to the south. And then we've got uh, two of our business owners that are here um, and uh, can talk about some of the things that are going on um, in their um, businesses. We've got um, Kate from Red Emma's. 
Woo hoo! I'm so excited about Red Emma's coming to uh, Waverly Main Street. Um, and then we have Dove who will be in the town hall. So we've got really great things. And of course, if you all haven't eaten at My Mama's Vegan yet over on 29th and Greenmount Avenue, you must do so. Um, so <laughs> we've got, and of course, pick up your books from Urban Reads. Um, so we've got it all here on Greenmount Avenue. Maybe that's the next uh, tagline. We got it all. Um, we need a taco shop. <laughs> so, yeah. so anyway, um, great. So great to see everybody today. Um, so Diana, tell us a little bit about um, yourself, but then also about Main Street and sort of the, the concept of Main Street, what this is all about and how it brings good things to our communities. Um, I will say I have two, I have lots of business areas in my district, um, but two Main Street areas, Greenmount Avenue and Hamden is actually a graduate. Um, so Hamden started, Hamden started the Avenue, um, started as a main street and then graduated. So, um, I'm very proud to have, uh, so many in my, uh, in my district. So, um, so Diana, I'll stop yeah. talking and have you give us an update. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've we've had a lot of um, I think exciting things happening for Waverly Main Street. Of, of course, with the streetscape getting ready to wrap in November, um, we actually have been working with Tree Baltimore, um, which was actually going to come into the Waverly neighborhood, but they're going to stay in Remington. But we've been able to kind of walk through the neighborhood, walk through the business corridor to identify where we can still fill in more trees and also work through the community to kind of refill tree tree pits that are existing that folks may want trees in. We were, um, you know, recently awarded some additional state funding, about $75,000, which is incredibly exciting because now we can do some additional facade improvements for um, everyone who is above where the uh, Boulevard Theater is up to Waverly Crabs. So that will, uh, you know, allow those business owners to do, you know, both interior and exterior work, which will look phenomenal, of course, when the streetscape is completed to have some of those businesses take on some of the projects that they probably have been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, Vehicles for Change is another great one. They were actually a part of a past um, Bernie um, state funding that we were able to help them. And they actually did some um, renovations on the inside to really expand their classroom. So for those who are not familiar with Vehicle for Change, they take a variety of people who want to learn the car industry trade and they work on cars right up the street on Greenmont Avenue. I myself have taken my car a couple of times and they now have expanded their classroom so that they can still be safe during COVID but have more students in that space. So now they'll actually be working on a phase two, which is some more um, exterior facade improvements. So that'll be exciting to see some of the work that they're doing. We're they also were, we were hoping that Tree Baltimore would move into that space, right? And that didn't yeah, work out. Yeah, okay. and, and Tree Baltimore actually decided to stay in Remington because it was just an easier fit for them. So we did um, a recent walkthrough last week. So they did sadly let me know because I was really excited for them to be on Greenmount Avenue. But Remington's not far, so it's it's still nice to have them in the area. Um, and even with Waverly Crabs, we're, we're hoping to do some of the extensive projects that they want to do, like including some outdoor seating and being able to have your crabs and hang out for a bit and be able to sit down and relax for a, a little bit of time. This right. So hold on. I'm going to um, just yeah. for a second for for everybody that's on, I'm going to share my screen just for a second so everybody can get acclimated on what we're talking about, um, if you don't mind, because um, I forgot to do this earlier, of course. Um, so here we are. So the, the Main Street area is pretty much, you know what, I should have pulled up the map from your website, sorry, <laughs> yeah. um, is 35th Street all the way to 29th Street here pretty much and right. um so there's a lot here um so diana was just talking about right here this space here is the um uh vehicles for change it was the full circle auto and then now you can still take your car there um but they're doing trainings and then here's waverly crabs so we're going to kind of keep moving down um and uh pull up the map every so often but this is kind of where we um where we are so 
there's just a there's a lot happening, which is great. And part of the work of the Main Street. Um, before we keep going down is um, to help raise money for these businesses um, to do facade improvements and things like that, raise money for the organization as well, um, but really to promote the area. And there's a formula that Main Streets use, I forgot it, but there's a formula that Main Streets use to be able to do all of that. And then Sean and the mayor's office just puts it all together for all of the um, main streets in the, in the city, but each one has their distinctive style, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so Diana, so you're working with um, Waverly Crabs. It'd be great to have like an outdoor seating in the middle of the summer, right, walk up and get your crab, like that's amazing. And um, so that'll be cool. So going down from there, we have uh, your pizza. Yeah, we've been um, working with the Waverly Improvement Association just to, you know, make sure that there's some set community standards and um, York Pizza has some new owners. So we wanted to not just welcome them to the area, but also address some of the concerns that some of the surrounding neighbors had. So we've been able to work with them in creating a new community MOU. Um, which kind of has some general stuff, making sure that they're cleaning their gutters, making sure that they're sweeping, sweeping the street. You know, um, we now have a power washer at Waverly Main Street. So we're working with the businesses when they have those grease spills and, you know, it makes our sidewalks look bad. So this is, you know, a resource that they can use to make sure that our blocks stay clean and, um, you know, visibly appealing for not just the businesses, but the people who are coming to shop and people who live here. Yes, um, and we've had some residents do, uh, you know, uh, concerned about all of that. So it's good that they are have been negotiating with um, with the association and with the Main Street. And um, anybody on here, you can certainly ask questions in the chat um, as well, so we can pass those along. Um, and then, uh, so uh, Stadium Lounge also just signed a new MOU with the community. Mm -hmm. They did to so they, keep their they facility one. space clean, and um, they had requested to change their liquor license from yeah. uh, a tavern license um, to uh, simply carry out like a, a regular liquor store, and they haven't done that yet. Um, but that's in the in the works. I have, we already passed the resolution in the city council um, as well. Um, can you put in the MOUs that none of the businesses can sell weapons of any kind? Their licenses for doing business don't let them. Correct. But um, and so that's already taken care of through the zoning, but certainly a good idea to make sure that that's the case. Mm -hmm. um, so going down from there, let's see, there's my old campaign office was across the street. And so there's some proposed development there. We don't know all the plans yet. And then going south from there, we have um, the best Thai restaurant in the entire city. Um, Thai, Thai restaurant is what it's called. And if you haven't been there or haven't ordered from there, you must. Um, it is the best Thai and they've been there for 40 years. We're very lucky that their landlord was able to work with them during the pandemic. Um, and uh, they um, just say hello to Billy in there and uh, Mr. Billy and, um, you get some really amazing, amazing food. So he's he's really been an anchor for that block. And actually on the corner, before you get to the Thai restaurant, there is a new tacos and smoothies. Mm -hmm. um, and they're phenomenal. They're, I mean, absolutely. Oh good, I haven't tried them, that's amazing, good. <laughs> amazing, amazing food. So they are um, also working with us to start looking at facade improvements too. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then um, across the street is the Uncle Lee's, which also will be developed at some point. Um, and also the uh, Community Mediation Center, which by the way, is a phenomenal resource for our communities. I was the board chair at one point. And they, I mean, they really have the opportunity to do, they've been doing a lot of work. You know, you have a conflict in your neighborhood, you ask the mediators to, to, to come in and it's been great. Um, I think they need to be utilized more, frankly. So anybody who has a conflict, <laughs> go to mediation. Um, is the road construction, the water line on Greenmount? Is, um, so the water is finished, the conduit is finished, BGE is still there doing, I don't know what, 
gas line replacement. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll get the streetscaping. So that's what's happening on, on 32nd and, and Greenmount. That's a good question. And it, BGE has been there for a long time. So it's been very frustrating there as well. Um, so the boulevard is next. Yeah. So, so that's I, where the Main Street offices are, right? It is. And we had um, one of the local artists, she actually did the work for Bottoms Up Bagels. She actually did a nice holiday um, painting for us on one of our main windows. So if you walk by the office, you'll see a very um, fall festive, you know, painting. I'm not really ready to acknowledge that it's winter yet. So the fall skate will, <laughs> will right. stay up for a bit <laughs> and then we'll just skip to summer. Um, but she came out and, and did that work. So she's been doing a, a lot of work in the community, which has really allowed us to look at how we can connect with artists a little bit differently. So we've been reaching out to different artists to look at what additional available walls are in the business district and how we can utilize those and put more murals and more artwork up. And the, the Boulevard is owned by the Central Baltimore um, Future Fund. Um, we have a great partnership with the Central Baltimore Partnership and the Future Fund. And they're still working on what that's going to end up being. They are. And I do believe they will probably um, be moving forward with a couple of plans. And then we'll be announcing what some of those plans are soon. So I'm super excited to kind of hear what the final plans are for that building, because it's such a staple building um, along Greenmount Avenue. I mean, you can't, you can't miss it. Right. And the design, they still kept a lot of the original from that building, right? The, the, what it's called, the, they're not called statues, but whatever they're called on the top. And then the, um, the uh, marquee um, is there. So I think it'll be, it'll be great. Yeah. They're called freezes. What was yeah. it called, Jake? Jake? They're, they're freezes. 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 The freezes. Thank you. <laughs> um, you tell I'm not an architect. Um, so um, will the mural on top of the theater be redone? And can, well, we'll, think, we'll know when the uh, Central Baltimore Future Fund um, announces the use for that space. Um, I think that uh, the, the urban renewal plan um, that Greenmount Avenue uh, has, um, has the marquee as like a permanent thing um uh because it kind of sticks out so it's not anyway so we're allowed to keep it there um so we'll we'll see we'll see i hope so um you know that's pretty it's a it's historic so um and then we've got uh so green mount and 33rd just that intersection some of you uh, who've been through the 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 um area lately have probably seen how weird it looks with like a silver light post with the traffic lights and then a silver light post without traffic lights right next to it. Um, those are, you know, we're obviously eventually going to get one traffic light um, uh, post, uh, but there's some parts missing to be able to make the transition. And so we're sitting there with two silver poles. <laughs> so, so that's um, the craziness there. And you'll see that there are some of the um, the median was uh, tailored, if you will, so that um, it's more um, um, ADA accessible. Um, so um, anything else on north of 33rd Street? No. So um, south of 33rd, there's a lot of activity as well. Um, the the Mama Lucia's building is still vacant and we're really hoping that there's um, some movement there soon. Um, I believe there was a fire at one point and then there didn't end up moving back in. Um, going down, there's obviously the um, a block away is Waverly Market, which has been there forever and we're very happy that that's there. And then we keep going down um, to, we have a lot of shops around that area, some Sell, sell phone places and men's clothing stores and the, the um, um, yeah, is there any chance Mama Lucia ownership? I, I don't know. We don't know, right, Diana? Do we have anything I, idea about the? I do know it does have a, a new owner. Um, I know they do plan on keeping it a restaurant, a carryout. I don't know anything else additional. They're still kind of working on their initial plans. 
and then they will eventually come to Waverly Main Street to kind of work with us on what they want to do. And then that's actually when we send them out to the community, to all the um, immediate community associations so that they can share those plans out too. So at the moment, I don't know outside of that what they're going to kind of continue to do. Okay, but new ownership is actually a positive thing. So it is, and it's it's nice when it's um, owners who already live in the community, who already um, you know are are active members. So when we can kind of keep things um, in house for folks who are creating startups and build ups, I, I I think that that's a win. Definitely, definitely. Um, and so that thirty two hundred block, you know, we've got those pretty active shops. Um, uh, years ago, we had all kinds of problems with um, with kitties, the liquor store there. They've actually been behaving themselves recently. So knock on wood, we're going to keep an eye on that um, as well. Um, so that's uh, so that's good. And then we um, uh, have, um, let's see, 31st. So uh, so 32nd and um, Green Mount is like super active right now. Uh, Pete's Grill, alive and well. Um, they're doing amazing. They're doing great. Um, and uh, the Waverly Market, the Hip Hop Chicken. Let's talk about that before we talk about Red Emma's. The Hip Hop Chicken um, is uh, those two. All those buildings are in tech sale. So we're hoping to get uh, some results out of um, uh, folks. You know, talking about. We're going to talk about the dollar store in just a second. Um, but uh, hoping to be able to get some, you know, good use out of the, those. So we, we're monitoring that situation uh, because uh, those two buildings are in tech sale. Right. The liens are moderate, you know, so we'll see how that goes. And we're not seeing any evidence that they're trying to get it back. So right. um, we'll see how that, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, uh, we, so the other, there's, there's two major other things happening on that corner. Um, uh, and I don't know what we should talk about first, the dollar store, Red Emma's. <laughs> Let's talk about Red Emma's. Let's start with a good thing. Red Emma's, um, which uh, uh, Kate uh, is here um, for Red Emma's. And I wanted to give her a second to talk a little bit about what they're planning on, on doing. Red Emma's, um, you know, I am just, I'm just so thrilled that Red Emma's chose us intentionally to come here and be here with us. Um, and uh, so Kate, tell us a little bit about um, about Red Emma's and then we'll keep going down Green Mountain Avenue. Okay, thanks Odette. Hi everybody. Um, so I'm Kate, uh, I'm one of the worker owners at Red Emma's. I think most of you um, have probably heard a little bit about us, but just really quickly recap for anybody um, who's just hearing about us for the first time or wondering what exactly we are. We're a worker owned cooperative. Um, that means that everybody who works at the store, everybody who's hired at the store has a pathway towards equal ownership of the business, which for us is a really critical piece of what we do. Um, we kind of exist to promote cooperative um, ownership and, and help workers all across our industry and all across the city figure out how to um, how to become work around. Um, and we run a bookstore, a coffee house, a vegetarian cafe, and um, a community events venue. And we've been doing this since 2004. We opened our first space. Um, we have been in a couple different spaces since then. We were in uh, Mount Vernon for many years, and then on North Avenue, and then in Mount Vernon again. Um, and this time with the support of um, a lot of different organizations, we were actually able to purchase two buildings. Um, so we purchased 3128 Green Mount, which is the little storefront that is right next door to Pete's Grill, it's in between Pete's Grill and Melba's Place. And then we also purchased 415 East 32nd Street, which is the old early attic building. It's that big stone building um, that is, uh, that's overlooking the farmer's market um, right, right on the edge there. And what we're doing is um, we're working with the city to consolidate the buildings um, and create one, um, one multi-use space. So it will have, um, a community classroom that's available for anybody to use for community meetings, organizing meetings, 
free classes, anything that's free educational programming, um, totally free to use and then sliding scale for people who want to use it for private meetings um, or fee-based classes. Um, the coffee house will, will persist. Um, we focus really hard on um, trying to create a, a, a coffee house that is um, pretty diverse and welcoming. Um, and we try to keep our prices as low as possible. So we've, we've worked really hard to engineer the menu to, to make that possible. Um, and then we also, of course, have our, have our bookstore. Um, and we're super excited to be joining um, a neighborhood that already has amazing, thriving bookstores. The thing about bookstores is that book shoppers really like to go to multiple bookstores. Um, I, I know this, I'm a book shopper. I love to spend time in, in bookstores. I have spent so many hours in normals over, over the years that I've lived in Baltimore. Um, and being able to move from one bookstore to another, especially bookstores that have a really different focus um, and, and really um, specialize in different kinds of authors and different kinds of books, um, I think we're going to be able to turn Waverly. Um, and, you know, I think we're going to be able to turn Waverly back into a book district, which I think is, is exciting. Um, so we are, we're still pretty early stage. Um, we are renovating the buildings um, in, in bits and pieces. We're hoping to be partially open in some capacity. Um, late, late March, fingers crossed. I, I don't know if that will happen, but that's, that's where we are right now. That's what we're aiming for. Um, that won't be the full development project. That will be probably the front half of Greenmount, just enough to get the cafe open, to get the doors open so that people can come in and, and just start seeing the space and start talking with us and meeting the worker owners. Um, and you will see us out front of the Greenmount space um, starting in the next couple of weeks. We'll be doing some, um, some info hours. We'll just be out there with a the table and some coffee so folks can stop by, go get lunch at Pete's Grill, um, get lunch at My Mom is Vegan, pass by our space, um, stop and talk to us, ask us questions. Um, because we, we know that folks have a lot of questions, um, uh, and we have a lot of questions and we're really excited to finally be at a point where we can actually, um, start talking with people in person, even though it'll be outside for now. Well, and the, the um, there's so many exciting things about Red Emma's. I mean, it has been a gathering space, um, for, um, activism as well which uh, if uh, folks know Waverly and folks know Abel, there is activism here. Um, and certainly being part of the, the book, you know, with um, um, Urban Reads and um, Normals uh, and uh, Red Emma's, I think that's a nice actually interest, you know, different emphasis on the books. And so, you know, they can certainly work collaboratively, collaboratively together. The cool thing is, you know, well, there's lots of cool stuff, but the other piece that I th find great is that eventually when the 32nd Street space is open, it overlooks the, um, the market. And so we have, you know, just the interaction between the two on Saturdays is just going to be phenomenal. Plus, I would imagine, I'm hoping, that you'll use that outdoor lot space um, uh, as a gathering space as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, that outdoor lot space that's actually used by the Waverly Market during the um, market days, and it has those blue benches on it, that's new this year. It's really a great development. It's a design for distance, you know, get, get outside and sit around. And it's one of the greatest things that happened to the market, I think. Um, but is, uh, and some of you know that um, my husband, John, he did a, a sponsored a music series. So people were able to utilize that space for music. So I would imagine that Red Emma's could even program that space um, as well. So I think it's gonna be really cool. Um, and uh, there's, you know, there's so many options in our neighborhood because we do have um, St. Paul Street as well, but being able to come this way. And here's the other thing is that our worker owned co-ops are coming to Waverly Main Street and that's cool. So we've got Red Emma's that's worker owned co-op it, the ACE over there by the giant just became a worker-owned co-op, which is really important and really good. And then I hear rumblings, and Diana, I guess you can um, you can verify of other groups saying, "Hey, I want to be here uh, because the energy is here." Um, Casual Ice Cream is a is working on getting to be a local a worker-owned co-op. They are my constituents. 
I would love to have them here. Um, so um, that would be really cool to have that kind of um, excitement uh, when you know we can we can have that. So so thank you, Red MS, for being here. Yay! Um, and certainly let me know um, anything else I can be um, helpful with. And I have been meaning to drop by also, but there's a lot of construction equipment, so maybe that's not a good idea right now. <laughs> but it's uh, so so you'll see it's. So for those of you to just get the picture in your head, it's the Pete's Grill, and then there's the early attic building, and then they'll wrap around and have that space between uh, Pete's Grill and um, Melba's. Uh, Melba's also a staple in the community. Not all of us go to, I mean, I've been to, to um, Melba's and um, I love it. So I'm glad that it's uh, become a partner in our community. It took a while, but we're very excited about that. Um, and then, we have the ACE. So the other part, and I'll, I'll get to um, Jake and Dove in a second. The other thing that's happening on 32nd and um, Greenmount is um, the um, Dollar General. Uh, so for those of you who don't know the story, uh, the, the Rite Aid building, um, uh, Rite Aid closed. They've been closing a lot of their uh, stores. And we thought initially, actually, that it would end up being a Walgreens, just like the rest of the way of the, the Rite Aids. And that didn't occur. Um, it was a private transaction. They did not need zoning. They did not need design. They didn't need anything. So they um, didn't need to come to the community. And we found out about it. Um, I saw something on the Board of Estimates agenda like five weeks ago. And it was for a um, minor privilege to put trees on the sidewalk. <laughs> I said, no, no, we're not, no, they're not getting the trees. The developer has to come and talk to us. Um, and so we delayed that agenda item. Um, the mayor and the council president and the comptroller thought I was totally nuts because they're like, what the heck is wrong with the trees? I'm like, it's not about the trees. <laughs> it's about, so we just wanted that person to come and talk to us. Um, so uh, I convened a meeting of some of the community leaders and then um, Senator Washington did the same. We're on the same page about how we want to handle this. So the dollar store is coming. It's going to be very, very hard to break that lease. Um, and so, uh, Diana, you could talk about the rest of it. Talk about the MOU and all of that since you're leading that process. Yeah, sure. Um, it is, you know, as you mentioned, in incredibly hard for the for the property owner to get out of that lease. It is a, a 10 year lease at the moment. Um, one of the, the things that we will be asking for, of course, is that they work with Waverly Main Street so that e even in their design scope, that it falls within, you know, the design and look and feel of Waverly Main Street, that it is not the standard kind of dollar store look that they typically bring to neighborhoods. So we're actually working with an architect to be able to provide them really at the bare minimum one or two options to really make sure that they own up to everything that we are asking that's coming from the community. So we are getting ready to put together a pretty extensive community MOU with the property owner and we will be tying in the Dollar General. And a lot of those pieces um, will be pretty similar to some of the other community MOUs. However, we're trying to make sure that the MOU that we're creating has a little bit of grit behind it that we are able to hold them accountable for anything that they may not do, which is some of the standard things that we see at some of the other dollar stores that are in the area of not keeping their property clean, you know, making sure that they are working with their staff and respecting their staff and respecting the community that they are heavily embedded in. So we are starting to put all of those pieces together with our community leaders so that we can move that ahead. I know their timeline, um, is expected for a March um, opening, but of course with um, Councilwoman's help, we're, we're hoping to delay that to make sure that we can get them to sign off on everything that we want them to sign off on before they're able to open. Um, yeah, so it's, um, it's uh, I, I think that several of us would have preferred something different. Um, and we already have three, two other dollar stores in the area. Um, so in terms of some of you have these questions about enforcement of an MOU, we, uh, the 
the um, property owner is different than the Dollar General. So unlike the building on 25th Street, the Dollar General on 25th Street, also in my district, um, that building is actually owned and operated by Dollar General. That's not the case here. Um, also, our um, delegation, uh, uh, Senator Washington, um, Delegate McIntosh, and Delegate Boyce, um, the, um, they have some leverage because the developer is actually part of the development team at Northwood Shopping Center. So um, I, uh, I know they've had these conversations. I'm not exactly sure how, what they're going to be doing, but yeah, Ms. Bridget, you're exactly right. <laughs> um, so uh, we are doing our best. Um, and uh, I have some tricks up my sleeve um, that I'm not going to go public with yet quite yet. And so we're going to really work hard to make this happen. Um, you know, they had also talked about doing their they're building like a their business that the step up that Dollar General has. What's it called? Pop up mart or something? Right, the pop up mart. Yep. And it's like a step above. Um, so the the big thing here that we're worried about, or at least I'm going to speak for myself, that I'm worried about is, you know, we do have a discount store in the community. It's Herman's Discount down the block, and they have been a family owned business uh, forever here. Uh, and um, uh, I would want that um, patrons looking for discount store type of items would go there um, and not a, a big a big store. The other thing that we're doing, just so you know, we're doing two other things. Uh, one is that we will be working with and, and we'll need all of your input, those of you on the Zoom and on Facebook. Um, we're amending the uh, urban renewal plan um, to have design guidelines and design review so that this doesn't happen again where people just can't come to us without you know any any you know us me the community um without any um you know leverage and so design guidelines um and then i'll be working with the main streets uh, right now in the zoning code there's something for big box stores that you can't have big box stores at certain in certain areas so you can't have them in the main street areas um with the exception of the giant, that was something different. <laughs> um, and um, I may need to create another layer for some of these smaller type things. Um, so we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, we have been in communication with the de developers uh, and um, Diana's taking leadership on that. So we're, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, we're going to try to make the best of it. Um, so the uh, so anything else on the dollar store, um, Diana? Um, yeah. Outside of I, I will say because I did see um, some questions about you know additional leverage and, and whatnot in the the chat. I will say after we've met with the property owner at, at this point a, a couple of times, he's really receptive to working with the community. I think the last couple of meetings that he has attended with um, association presidents where he really got an earful um, of kind of how he can do really great for another project and then kind of bypass what he would have done for us. So I, I think because of that, he's really willing to work with us and try to make some of those adjustments and, and really be held accountable for some of those pieces. And then the um, the other piece was they, they did start work without permits. So we got a stop work order immediately, um, which tells me, <laughs> you know, there's still gonna be um, work, to, work to do. So anyway, it was it's it's an unfortunate situation that we're hoping that um, we can work with them, uh, but also uh, put the MOU in such a way that are there violations that he can just. So we'll we'll work on it. Um, and then we have uh, sort of going south from there. Our wonderful trusty firehouse engine thirty one. Those guys are the best. Um, they're one of the, you know, we have several firehouses in the area. Greenmount and 25th is actually the busiest um, in the city, but um, 
this one comes close. <laughs> so if, um, if uh, you all are walking by there, say hello to the guys, they're um, really great. Uh, and then we have, um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, so we also have um, further down uh, Herman's, we were just talking about Herman's. Um, they, uh, you know, in addition to the discount store, Herman's uh, does um, custom printing of t-shirts and things like that. Um, they also have a contract with the Baltimore City Schools. So everybody, so once a year in August, September, everybody in Baltimore comes to Waverly Main Street because they have to get their uniforms for their kids <laughs> at Herman's, okay? So it's super busy around, which I love. I love more eyes on the street. I think it's great. Um, and that allows more people to discover the area. So it's actually a wonderful thing that I think Herman's is doing. It, literally every family who's got a kid in public school comes to Herman's to get their uniforms. <laughs> so um, it's, it's exciting. Um, so we wanna um, do right by them. Um, and then uh, across the street there, there's a, a couple of convenience stores and some, um, men's clothing stores. We don't have any women's clothing stores um, on the avenue. Uh, we have uh, the Goodwill, the Goodwill across the street from the Hermans. Um, very busy place. I have a constituent who works there and um, they have a, I don't know if you all have noticed the cool window displays at the, at the um, uh, Goodwill. They have somebody who volunteers to do these amazing window displays. And if you haven't seen them, please take a notice. The window displays are amazing, uh, theme-based, um, whatever the holiday is or whatever, um, color coordinated. Like I'm just, I'm not talented at all that way. And I think it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, so then, you know, the, the town hall is on 31st Street and Greenmount Avenue. And we will talk about um, some of the other things that you all have brought up on the chat. Um, the, um, so Deborah, just going back to the Dollar General, how easy it would be for, um, well, I think it depends on the square footage that they needed. So that was the other piece of, of that, that part of it. Um, so town hall, we have with us today, um, uh, Jake Wittenberg from um, Jacob, Jake, Jacob, Jake, um, from who's a constituent of mine over in uh, Canterbury and he's part of Edgemont Builders. Uh, that's the developer of um, the town hall and then Dove, which is uh, who's with the, one of the businesses or the business that's going in there. So Jake, take it away. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, so very exciting uh, stuff. Very exciting, very excited to, um, uh, present Dove to this larger community as he's been meeting with folks in the community um, before announcing his opening his business and and all the communities that he's met with and uh, been around have been have really embraced him and um, given our partnership with the Central Baltimore Future Fund we wouldn't have um, engaged with any business that wasn't uh, wasn't you know willing to do that community work and and um willing to be a part of this uh, larger community that we're we're all trying to build together um in terms of the larger town hall development um uh you know i kind of live and breathe it every day so i don't want to get too far into the weeds with uh with people um but there are three structures there's the tax what we call the tax building which used to be um one of those income tax places is the town hall the larger town hall and then the annex building um as far as the larger town hall goes um, I don't know if anybody saw, but this uh, massive six-month lead time door uh, will be installed uh, later this week. It's it's at the at the job. You know, all the COVID delays, all the stuff behind us. Um, we're hoping uh, to be leasing in uh, 11 days uh, the upstairs apartments. So we're very excited about that. Um, you know, there's we're hoping uh, it'll probably be more like 20 days. Uh, from now, I was just gonna say um, that's really soon. That's cool. It's it's very soon. There's uh, maybe a few too many moving parts still to uh, say that it will be done. Um, it'll probably be more like 20 days, uh, and then Dove will be uh, operating uh, a business um, in the corner space of the town hall, and then on both floors of the annex. And he can speak to about how exciting that is. And there's, um, we have very exciting potential tenants and we have signed letters of intent. 
Uh, I just need some feedback from the Central Baltimore Future Fund um, in order to be able to move forward uh, with those people and, and make those exciting announcements, which is uh, which will be really great. So, um, uh, so we also without further, um, it's a historic it's ahead. a historic building. So you had to be you know picky about what you were doing because of the historic nature oh my. of the building. This has been such a positive meeting, Odette. No, I know I, it is a positive thing. No, I mean, it's a good no. thing. <laughs> what I what I mean to no 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 I totally what I mean uh, what I mean when I say that it's been uh, Kafka esque uh, yeah. the contortions that have been done to uh, not only maintain that facade but then also make up the history that's part of the tax building, which the Maryland Historic Trust hasn't been exactly easy to, to deal with on. But with that said, um, uh, Chap has been wonderful to work with. And uh, it's been a total joy. The plaque will be going back up uh, that was there. It's been sitting in my office for safekeeping um, since we had to take it out so that it didn't get damaged. And, um, and all the things, I mean, frankly, we wanted to make the building uh, much more illuminated than it is and got pushed back from MHT. Um, we wanted some, some some different things than, but uh, finished products are always compromises. So um, with that said, I turn it over to Dove, who looks like he's going in and out um, with this very exciting uh, business to announce and, and concept. So Dove, to you. Um, thank you, Jake. So we're really excited to get to come to the Waverly neighborhood and we'll be opening up a community health center, um, nutrition center, cafe, a commercial kitchen that the community will be able to have access to, um, and a little market. And we'll be running classes for adults and families. We're working with like Johns Hopkins and the 29th Street Community Center to help the local residents um, find ways to get healthy in different ways than they've experienced before. I think, is that about it, Jake? No, do your whole song and dance. <laughs> whole thing, monkey, come on, dance, dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, God, no, I mean, but, you, but here's the thing is that you started, you started your business as like a side hustle during the pandemic because, yeah. um, and, you know, and you pro you're providing, you know, nutritious food for people. And then you figured out, wow, people actually need this. And then it's like, well, let's bring it up to Baltimore. Yeah, I mean, that's so the version of the long story. <laughs> exactly. Um, this, and, this was and the programming in, in the programming space in Portland um, prior to that. Yeah. Okay, so I'll try a little bit better this time. Um, so what what happened? So we run. Um, my brother and I we started a nutrition service that like cooks healthy food, and fills people's fridges up and teaches them how to cook. And we started in the Maryland D.C. area, more closer to D.C. And we just started rapidly expanding. And why we expanded so well is we really saw with our model of eating, we saw um, a complete curing of type two diabetes um, within very short amounts of time, like a three month period on average for our customers to have all their A1C levels and be off all their medications. So it really was just amazing that with the right support and the right model, we can actually take people and like, change their lives, getting rid of this chronic disease that's been plaguing them, their families, taking them out of the workforce, costing so much money, commuting, all by just giving them the right support. And so we realized that we had this beautiful thing and we met with Jake and Ted and that Jake has been, and both of them in the building have been the most amazing supporters in bringing this to the Waverly neighborhood because we were originally just going to go in a Maryland suburb closer to DC. And it's actually a little bit out of our way to be in Baltimore, but we really love this idea of getting to work in this community where it's so needed. Like that this disparities from in, in this neighborhood just to the other neighborhoods, like it's like a, we're seeing like a 30, just I think it's, I think Odette, you mentioned in the meeting, the lifespan from this community to like five to 10 miles down the road is like five or six years left life expectancy just by living in this neighborhood. So we really think that we can do so much good here by providing people access to healthcare in a way that they never would ever get to experience. 
And so you're providing, you know, that service, but also like we could be able to walk in and purchase food and, you know, so and it'll be still yeah, like a cafe, still kind like of a thing. cafe kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we plan on paying all, we're not quite a workers own collective yet, but we plan on paying everyone at a one-to-one -one model with all of us. So our goal is to convert to a workers own collective model in the future. Uh, but we do plan on having a lot of those same policies that a workers own collective have in place. And we also plan on having um, our commercial kitchen, which we use for our, our business, be available to the community um, to start their own businesses in and we'll support them as well. And doing that and sort of share our journey, our experience that we've had from taking a little side hustle to an actually like beautifully growing business. And it's called Seed and Fruit. Is that what I saw? Mm -hmm. yeah. Seed and Fruit. Okay. Um, um, will your market accept EBT and who pays for the meal service for the people you want to reach? So, um, yes, our market does accept EBT. Um, we have received, we are receiving some grants for the food for the people as well. And also, too, our business is dedicated to taking its profit for all of our paying customers and using that to help those who can't afford. Um, our services to have it at low to no cost. Great. That's amazing. Um, and you don't have a, do you have a website up yet? No, we're working on that. And Diana yeah. has been, I just say Diana has been like the biggest help in the world and like bringing this together. So really thank you to Diana here. And we should have a website up in the next month or so. And we'll have signage as well coming too. Right, yeah. so all of you on this uh, Zoom and on Facebook, um, you heard it here first, what's happening on at the town hall, which I'm very excited yeah. about. Um, so yeah. thanks very much yes. for taking an interest in the area. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, so thank you very much. That's an awesome update. I'm excited about it. There's so much happening. Um, and then with, the thing is that with more people coming, more businesses coming, more businesses will be coming. And, you know, it's going to be very exciting. Um, so keeping going south, we only have a few more minutes left of our time. Uh, we have across the street, the beautiful, amazing mural uh, that was uh, uh, painted by Gaia. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's amazing. I mean, I, I can't even tell you how, what it does to the area when you just drive through there and see, um, see, uh, the um, the area, uh, the, the mural. And then across the street from that, um, I, I just saw somewhere in the text about the, the FedEx um, building, the, uh, the FedEx, FedEx business there. It's not a FedEx though. What's it called? Office no, it's Flex? Called, it's Office Flex. So they have FedEx capabilities within the building, but then they also have conference rooms and then they have worker rent spaces so you know if you need to get out of your house and you're tired of you know working <laughs> in your living room and your dining room they actually have spaces there that you can set up and and work either regularly on a regular basis or one-off opportunities so they also do mailing and a, a ton of, of stuff so they're they're definitely a, a great resource if you need any office-based services right so like it's a uh uh they have um, the copier service, like you said, if they also have lockers. So if you don't want to get stuff sent to your home, you can get it sent there and you know you have a set locker. Um, there's a nice conference space in there um, as well as individual offices. And then on the top there as well. And I think Green Man Partner still has their offices also in that, um, in that building. Um, so, and they're starting to, Green Man Partner, somebody asked about that there, working on the building across the street, also to do some uh, worker um, shared space, I believe is the last thing that I heard. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll see some, some um, activity there, which is exciting. So, uh, and then going further south, we have the book thing. If you all don't know, the book thing is also amazing. I forgot to mention them earlier. We got normals, we got the book thing, we have <laughs> Urban Reads. And so the book thing is not completely open. It's still very much volunteer run. Um, and the book thing um, is uh, has uh, browsing days, I think once a month on a Sunday. Um, and, but they only have limited drop off. So you have to go to the website and kind of see what's going on there. But, um, you know, super excited to, st to start to have, you know, the book thing was closed for a little while. There were some legal issues. Um, and, 
uh, they're they're bringing it back. The, these really dedicated, amazing. All of these people are volunteers working to bring the book thing back to Remount Avenue. I just can't. I mean, it's amazing. They spend so much time on it. So I'm I'm um, grateful for them to to be doing that. Um, and then we've got a daycare and a convenience store, and then we've got Urban Reads. Um, Urban Reads was, uh, we'll see it in, in um, uh, Baltimore Magazine soon, but the top bookstore in Baltimore. Uh, Tia Hamilton, I think that the owner has really breathed some really amazing new life into, um, she's part of the Main Street Board, but also just, you know, you, you can't go come on to Green Man Avenue without going to Urban Reads. Um, and uh, so if you haven't done that, please do. She does sell some of her books during the Waverly Market as well. Okay. Um, and you just get her excitement there. I'm sorry, go ahead, Diana. Oh, no, and I was going to say she is bringing back the youth uh, summit. So she did do a youth summit um, this yeah. past summer. Uh, so she will be bringing that back again this summer and some other youth related activities that I'm really excited to see that I think will bring a whole new level of what it means for literacy in the neighborhood and how it, it interacts with our youth that are here. So that's really exciting to, to see that work that she's getting ready to start announcing soon. That's awesome. And she also publishes um, a magazine called S uh, State Versus Us magazine. Um, uh, she was formerly incarcerated. And so she's, uh, that magazine helps to bring out the voices of those that are still behind the wall. And um, it's really powerful um, and amazing. So uh, if you haven't been there yet, you should. Um, her best selling book apparently is The Black Butterfly by uh, Dr. Lawrence Brown. So if you haven't picked up yours, um, it's, it's great. So, and then um, Further down, uh, well, across the street, uh, I, uh, we have to mention St. John's Church. St. John's Church, has, uh, they were in danger of closing a few years ago, and they brought it back. The bells that you hear in the neighborhood are the St. John's Church bells. Um, and uh, it's a pretty amazing place if you haven't gone there. And at some point, they will be rehabbing their rectory. Um, not the rectory, the other side, um, uh, because that is needs to, you know, and, and want to make it a usable space. So um, just their campus is pretty amazing too. And they'll let you on if you just walk on, it'll be okay. Um, and then uh, we've got the, the laundry, Sudsville also a staple in the community. Um, and then uh, we've got my favorite place, um, uh, food place anyway, is uh, 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 my mom is vegan. So I'm vegan, I've been vegan for 25 years and when I, or more than that. And when I started, it was like, I could have a salad. <laughs> and now it's, it's so amazing. You could have, so you could go, you know, we could be able to go to see what Dove is doing and then, and cooking up and we can go down the street to my mom is vegan if you want to meet. Uh, Debonet is the owner. She wanted me to let you know that they are open on um, um, Thursdays through Saturdays from three to 11. So doing the late night. Um, and on Wednesdays they have, uh, they're open, but they have a very select menu of things that, you know, she, she's creating. So tonight I think they had a sushi that she was creating. Um, and so um, she's doing a lot of really creative things to bring us uh, so many different flavors. Um, so if you, and everything is vegan, you'll see the menu and it says fish and beef and all that, it's all vegan. And so, <laughs> um, so it's it's amazing, no meat, no dairy, um, pretty awesome. So I'm just really and glad add, that she's also. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I'll also add too, so we're working with My Mom is Vegan to help them get outdoor seating. So at, at some point they're going to actually turn in their, their back space, if you're familiar where the cleaners is and then their back space is right there so that they can have a, a place where you can also hang out and eat some of the, the great stuff that they have. So that's you know one of the, the bigger pieces that we're um, assisting them with. And then, um, not sure how many people know, but before the holidays and actually before um, it started to get cold, uh, My Mom is Vegan was also inviting local um, businesses to kind of have a, a mini market. So we're working with them to do that on a regular basis once a month, starting in March where we'll be um, hopefully trying to close down that little portion of the road so that they can have more vendors that are vegan and vegetarian based. Yes, there was a vendor there one time that had vegan baklava. And I almost, oh, wow. 
I, you know, I was making sure that I was able to sit down and actually like enjoy it because baklava is really important, but if it's, it, oh, it was awesome. So, you know, people are getting creative these days, which is really cool. Um, so I'm totally with you. Land of Kush is welcome. Welcome up here on Greenman Avenue. <laughs> I'd be happy to have them. It's easier parking than where they are. So <laughs> I'd be happy to have them. Um, and then uh, south of there, there's a, a couple other buildings. Oh, I, we forgot to talk about Peabody Heights. Many of you are know about Peabody Heights. They're just one of the best, um, you know, uh, uh, outdoor spaces. Uh, there's a music series. It's just really amazing. I know we're over our time, so I'm just gonna keep yeah, hurry up. And then I think that's pretty much it for the for the Main Street area. There's a lot more. Ha there's a lot of things happening south of there, like the new bagel. Well, it's not new, but the bagel place. Um, and uh, uh, bottoms up bagels, and there'll be a couple of things happening down there as well. So we could talk all day about Greenmount Avenue. Um, I'm very excited about what's happening. I've also put in a bill to remove peak parking restrictions in all of my district, and Greenmount Avenue will be part of that, so that the cars don't have to move at four o'clock or at nine o'clock at seven o'clock. So that way, it slows down the traffic. And what we've seen in areas where tra traffic is slower, I say, oh. I didn't know that business was there. Oh, I didn't know that was there because they keep zooming front. So um, I'm excited about that and also excited about the um, the work ahead. So um, I just want to thank everybody for being here this evening. There's so much more we can talk about. Um, I do know uh, we do still have a lot of vacant buildings um, on, not a lot, a good amount of vacant buildings on the on uh, Greenmount Avenue that we are working towards addressing. Um, so that we can get um, more um, great businesses uh, in the area. Oh, I forgot to mention the Main Street hats. The hat place is amazing. So if you need a, a, just any kind of hat, a stylish hat, or what, just go to Main Street hat. So um, we, have, uh, we have so much to offer. So I'm just really excited to be a part of uh, the Renaissance and we will need all of you that are participating today to be part of it um, as well. Um, so, um oh yes yeah, Greenmount collective is Greenmount collective still up there mm -hmm. yeah oh totally Greenmount collective is on venable and um so they're a, a collective of um you know the uh food um producers i guess secret sauce was there for a long time and there's some others there so yeah, there's so much i even missed some of it and i apologize if i missed anything um, so I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I don't want to take more of your time. Thank you so much, Kate, for everything you're doing. And I really appreciate it. Um, Jake and Dove, I'm excited to be able to just walk up the block um, and say hello. Um, well, and also Kate too, it's right over here. <laughs> um, but also just to be a part of, of something that's, that's really great. And I really you know, want to be able to have Greenmount Avenue be a destination for all sides of the district to be able to come together. Um, that is extremely important to me, um, which is why we spend so much time on it. Um, so our next town hall will be in February. Um, we don't have a topic yet, um, but I um, like this idea of some of the local pieces. So we'll get some uh, another local um, uh, piece in there. Uh, after that, we'll start concentrating on the city budget. Um, I want to do an exercise with all of you about um, the budget and because uh, it's very important um, that we all know about it, but also that we get some input uh, on it. Um, and, and then we'll go from there. So thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. Diana, thank you. Kate, Jake Dove, thank you. Everybody who's on Facebook and, and Zoom, really appreciate it. Send me an email if you need anything. We'll see you. Take care. Bye.